Hey everybody, good afternoon if you're in the UK or good morning wherever else you are. Uh, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom, my name's Colin Way and today we're going to look at um, pen blanks or alternative pen blanks or slightly different pen blanks. Um, I'm sure if any of you have turned pens you might have turned acrylic, polyester and timber of course. Um, but I just wanted to go over a few different things, um, something that you may not have, um, have looked at before and you know what these sessions are all about it's just hopefully to give you some ideas um now not everything has been a success this week in terms of my prep for you there has been a few failures and we're going to talk about those in a minute um but i'd like to get started on on the first pen i'm hoping um to make four but we'll see how things go um we you know time always tends to run away with me so let's just look at the first one in fact i will show you all of them but the first one we're going to look at um, is a bit of uh, eco epoxy that I've cast myself, and we've got some pine cones in this one. Um, ben is on cameras and on your questions today, so if you've got any questions, don't forget put them in the chat, and Ben's going to ask me. Um, but Ben, if you could put uh, those first couple of stills, so I just grabbed literally in the car park here uh, at Axminster Tools. Um, I've just grabbed a few pine cones, and I've used the eco epoxy with the maker powders, so just the um, uh, those fine metallic powders. And just mix it up so there's no pigment in this. Um, and to start with, all I've done used a little bit of mastic to um, adhere those cones down to my mold. And I've used one of the old lizard molds. I only needed part of it, so I, I blanked part off, off of it with um, uh, plywood. Then um, filled it up with the resin as deep as I needed to go. And I only needed to go about 20 millimeters, um, so three quarters of an inch. And, uh, and then out of that, I got three blanks. So once that was broken out of the mold, we've got that. I then cleaned it up, and then I've got three blanks, one of which, one of which I have here. Okay, so you can see literally just cleaned off. You can see what lovely effects that does generate with this, um, with these pine cones. All different ones. I've got a slightly finer cone here ready to turn for you. But let me just show you a pen that's already made. We can a look at this one and i think they're quite striking really really interesting material um when done some really pretty um grain in there so we're going to do one of those first i'm not quite sure what this one's going to be like because like i say it's much finer um sorry but if we can hang on there just for a little bit because i also want to show you um the other materials that we're going to look at so what i've got is this is a piece of maple this is the stabilized um, maple we'll talk stabilizing in a minute because that's going to um, be important for what i'm about to show you so in fact inside here this is dyed and stabilized this looked black on the outside it isn't once you break through that outer crust you'll see some lovely colors rainbow colors almost streaking through there um this is corn cob now we're going to talk about the corn cob if i can get to this one this is going to be the last one i do um i've done a lot of preparation on this corn cob apart from eating it in the first place and leaving that center husk i've then dyed it so just soaked it in dye i then soaked it in countertop resin because it was a little bit thinner no no vacuuming uh, at all in this one no pressure um, and then i've taken it down to this diameter and then soaked it in super glue so it should be ready to go and it gives a sort of a snake skin effect the corn cobs it's quite nice and then one um a, a, a already made a blank so you can buy blanks like this we do them um, here at Axminster, this is coffee bean in uh, polyester. Now, this one is thought to be quite a difficult one to turn, so I thought, well, we may as well turn it and ask, answer a few questions as well. I personally like this, the coffee bean ones because when you use the pen, um, the smell comes out immediately, so you get that lovely smell of coffee that lasts for ages. So there's those four, including the one we have on here, of course, um, that we want to – I'm going to try and turn for you, so I better crack on and, and get to it. So lots of different things. One I've cast, some I've bought, and, and some we've done a lot of preparation on. Um, let's talk about the failures first before I go any further and actually start the lay that. I wanted to do some poly, uh, polymer clay because it was a question of yours um, a few weeks ago, I think, is to turn some polymer clay. I haven't done a lot of it. I've over, well, I haven't over baked it. What I've done is I had the heat of the oven up far too hot. And so I almost burnt the outside my kitchen last night was full of smoke i burnt the outside but this the inside stayed um soft so i've just tried to practice that this morning and and actually in turning it i could tell that it wasn't going to work this is the blank that i started with 
where you can see where I've burnt the outside. The black that I started with is just randomly uh, mixing some of the clays together and then baking it. But on the inside, it was far too soft. So what actually happened, I don't know whether the, ca the camera picks that up, but it's almost like a wooliness. It's just too soft. It's picking up everything. So I'm going to go back to the drawing board on that. I am going to do it. Um, um, I'll, um, I'll let you know my results. I'm sure in the chat people will add their experiences um, with polymer clay. But for me, this first time didn't work. So I'll have to go back to the drawing board with that one. Um, okay, so let's start turning. Right, so we've got hopefully a good camera angle here that we can pick up nice and close i'm actually making a european pen the european style um it's the one that i'm showing here so it's got the little a logo one of my favorite pens for a long long time this one it's uh, sort of a halfway house um not too thin not too fat sort of thing um and it's a rollable really nice it's a twist mechanism on this one Okay, so yes, let's start nice and quick, around about 2,000 to 2,500 revs. I don't want to go too fast with this um, this, uh, this epoxy because sometimes when you're turning, it can actually melt um, and the, the, the fine shavings that come off will adhere to the surface. So I'm going to start with a skew cut from the, from the bowl gouge first. So I'm just using the bottom of the bowl gouge and just run the surface. One question that I know is going to be asked very, very soon is, did I use pressure or um, vacuum? So we need to talk about that as well. In this case, I used pressure. Um, on the timber that we're going to use in a minute, the, the maple, that was stabilized um, using um, a very uh, thin epoxy under vacuum. I never done that. That's a pre-bought blank. So it's vacuum to suck in all that uh, that epoxy and to get rid of all the air. But on these, this was pressure. So I'm just using the bowl gouge to rough down. Let's just have a quick look and see what sort of shapes we're getting. There we are. Isn't that beautiful? Really, really pretty stuff. And as we get through this one, um, we'll get a similar sort of pattern, but that's running through the core. That may not stay because we've got a lot to take off here. Um, so it, it probably turn up in this one, but not that one. Let's have a look. I've got quite a few bowl gouges down to my left because this is going to blunt the chisel. This is going to blunt the, blunt the chisel fairly quick. Now, I don't want to keep running off to the the sharpener now just a bit of information for you we are thinking of doing a series on sharpening um not on the lies but we'll have them just as a reset a, a resource for you to pull from at times and um, that's going to be coming in the next few months um, and i'm also going to be doing some mixing of resin because i know that again that was a question that a few of you had uh, last time we dealt with resin um, I need to mix some in front of you so you can see exactly how's and, uh, you know, what we use and things. So that's going to be coming up in, in the next few months. I need a face full of resin. So quite a thick blank, this one. This is the one I precast. Like I said, I'm just using the bottom of the bowl gouge as a skew. I just want to stop. Check so I know what I'm dealing with. And we're good. This this bottom bit's looking lo lovely. Wow. Look at that. You just don't know what's going to happen. And that's really nice. I'm pleased with that. So I'm going to just go to a parting tool briefly. What I want to do, this one has a little recess that um, a little decorative ring goes on. So I just need to cut that recess in.
And I know how wide to do that recess because this little separate ring here is designed to flow over the top there, look. Okay. Yes, Ben, we've got a question. So, Colin, I've been, um, I've been disconnected from the chat on YouTube. Um, All right. So any questions, they're going, um, accidents they're going to send through to me and I'll ask them to you. Wow, okay. they're going to be busy this afternoon. Okay, <laughs> okay. okay. Um, but if you've had any questions, um, don't worry, we will get to them. Um, just pop them in the chat as normal and um, they will message them in through to me. Well, I think out of all the potential um, demonstrations to cause questions, this is probably one of the biggest. So it, uh, it's going to be a fun afternoon. Yes, Ben. Um, so there's a question about um, turning a, a picture frame. Is that something we could do in the future? Yeah, definitely. We'll put that down on our to-do list. There is a, a, a growing to-do list, by the way, so be patient. I do, or we do, try and get to all of the suggestions um, at some time. So look, skew chisel now. I just want to clean up that finish before we get to sanding a little bit careful when you get to the edges that's going to be especially so on the the um coffee bean one in a moment and i have prepped a little bit of that coffee bean one uh, blank which we'll talk about that looks nice And what I'll do, we'll do all the assembly at the end, but we'll actually do the turning all together. A little bit more off that middle. Do you think there's any areas that the the resin hasn't got to. There's nothing stopping you from using thin super glue to sort of stabilize some of this. And in fact, on the corn cobs, that's exactly what I've done. That last little bit was all done with, with super glue. Just give it time to, to cure and make sure that you do it in a, a really well ventilated area because it can be quite nauseous, the gas that it gives off. Yes, Ben, questions. Look at that lovely material. That's wonderful. Pleased with that. Yes, Ben. That looks really good. Um, so we've got a, a, a few questions here. Um, what size did you cut the blanks to? Bigger than I should have is the answer. Um, they were cut to about 20 millimeters, and that was far too big. I've had to take an awful lot of that away. Um, but, you know, better that than, you know, I drill off or out the side of it, and you know, that preparation is, is key. But, so uh, yeah, 20 mil was the, the, the start. I'm going to do some dry sanding on that because it's a little bit ridged up and then we'll go to wet sanding. Yes, Ben, another question. And um, on another topic, where can you get hold of 100 mil by 100 mil or 4 inch by 4 inch um, timber for jam chucks? Something like Tulip. Yeah. Um, and I think they've sent in an email, they're saying. Yeah, so any, I want to say any timber yard. If you go to, we have one called Devon Hardwoods here that we use and that's kiln dry timber. Um, if you go to commercial timber yards, then you probably find air dry timber. Um, but you know, you don't have to use tulip. You can use anything as long as it's not prone to splitting. Ash is no good. Chestnuts, no good. Softwoods are no good. Everything else is fair game. So maples, sycamores, uh, limes, elms, oaks, all that sort of stuff. Um, and yeah anywhere like that really um turner's retreat they do um blanks uh, yandles if you're in this area do blanks styles and baits um all of these places um there's a little bit of research on the on the uh, internet and you, you'll find some close to you i think you were in i think it was stafford we were looking um i did have a quick look on google and there's a there was a few around you but you need to phone them up they may be just building materials so you just need to double check on those but it's yeah hardwood supplies is what you're searching for yes ma okay so shout out to claire she's helping us really well with all these messages um the uh, question here were the pine cones oven dried before casting them in resin no they weren't but they weren't fresh drops either they had been around for quite a while i do have a couple of boxes in, in my workshop at home with um uh, with with cones ready but these were literally from the car park outside so it is it would drop from the last time 
uh, I think just before the summer, they'd just been hanging around. Yes, Ben. And then um, the unsuccessful blank, can we just remind us what that was made of? Yeah, that was polymer clay. Polymer clay. So things like Fimo, um, kids, kids' clays, that sort of stuff. Um, but it does, it's designed to be baked in the oven, and I, um, I case-hardened it. I baked far too hot. Um, and so it really burnt the outside, but it didn't really do anything to the inside. I should have done it a little bit cooler for a lot longer. So that'll be next week's um, plan. I'm going to put dust extraction on now, but Ben, keep asking questions. Um, milli milliput, would that work as a pen blank? Never tried it, but it's the same sort of thing. Um, the difference with milliput is it doesn't, you don't cure it in the oven. Um, it goes off on itself. So I'm not quite sure if it's makeup. But um, best just give it a go, try it, and then come back and tell us all about it. And then there's um, – sorry, we don't know who these questions are coming from, but, uh, you know, you'll see them in the chat. Um, thanks for all the videos. They're, they're great for developing techniques. Do you have any advice for developing as an artist as well? Um, they mean that two people can turn a similar shapes, but one can just look better. If I knew the answer to that, I'd be a millionaire, as they say. No, I don't. Um, is you've and the thing? Don't try and be anybody else. You got to be your own. If you have a style, then that will be your style. Don't you? Know, you can copy, of course, as long as you give reference to the person you're copying. I think that's fair game. But um, no, it's got to be your style. Otherwise, it won't. It won't sort of flourish. You got to do something that you like. Um, but no, I don't. I mean, it is a, you know, it's one of those mysteries, isn't it? Um, let's get some extraction going and start sanding. No, I wish I did know. Watch as many people as you can. Take as much advice from as many people. Um, don't worry about things going wrong. Play, experiment, take inspiration from everywhere you can. All of those sorts of things. You hear them all the time, but it's dead, dead true. And it can be a harmless and simple thing. So I'm not sure whether four is going to work. Um, we're always 20 minutes in and I know any of the first one yet. Let me just make sure that's, that's sanded before we go and speed through. That's, I'm um, oh, happy-ish with that, yeah. So let's go 400. And then we're going to get some water on this, some wet sanding. That was 400. This is 600. If you're in the uh, Cityborne area, of course, on Saturday, I'm going to be doing the presentation for the about the robust lathe. I think I've already spoken to a few people that are going to be there. There we are. Right, now let's go and really ramp up the sanding. Beautiful. I love this cone. This is um, this is working really nicely. So now we're going to go to the little uh, micro sanding pads, generally used for um, polyester, acrylics, that sort of thing. I'm not going to go glassy, glassy, but we are going to go nice, sort of satiny finish. So there we are, number two. Right, now we're working on, I'm going to start jumping up now, so let's go to number four. You would obviously, or not obviously, but of course, you would want to go and spend a lot longer doing this bit. Finishing is as, as important as the actual turning itself. So spend some time, don't rush through it like I am. I just want to show you so many different things, that's the, that's the trouble. Yes, Ben, shout them to me. So a call. Uh, sorry, a, a question from um, Cliff. Um, are you using the universal mandrel? Let me do that. Let me do sorry, that. Now we're not making dust. Am I using the universal, universal pen mandrel? Pen mandrel. And what bushings are being used? Yeah. Okay. So this for the, these are the bushings that are um, are for this pen. So if you look up European pen kit, now underneath that 
either on the website or in one of our catalogs, you'll see the bushing for it. Um, from memory, I don't have the number of that bushing, but uh, Axminster, I know you're busy enough there doing the questions. Maybe you can have a look, or Ben, if you have five seconds, yeah, I'll we'll have that. a look at those bushings. Um, this is the the um, what's the name of this pen mandrel, Ben? Oh, this is the compression mandrel, the Evolution compression mandrel. There we are. So a question here from from Bill Cohen: um, What Good. do you do with open grain woods like oak to get a good finish? So, well, sanding sealer would be your first port core. Um, sanding sealer and then re-sand and then sanding sealer again and, and lightly sand and then put on whatever finish. Now, that could be um, as simple as maybe the cut and polish. It could be a friction polish. Um, you could lacquer and then denib, take back again. So um, anything like that, really. Uh, it depends on the type of finish you want and how hard a wearing you want it to be. Friction polishes are fantastic initially, but then they do die back fairly quick. Um, microcrystalline waxes are really, really good, designed for um, things to be handled as well. Um, and, of course, lacquers are going to stay really bright. And then Paul would like to know, um, do the micro sanding pads remain in the water? Um, no, you can take them out and dry them. Just make sure you use them with water, though, because if you use them without water, they won't last very long at all. So always use them in water just as a slip. I never tend to use them on timber either. I always keep them for the acrylics, polyesters, the plastic type materials. Um, that works well. Just look at that lovely figuring. Now, we'll make it so when the pen's together, that figuring is going to carry on through. Okay, that's a really pretty pen. Now, I'm not going to do any assembling. Um, yet we'll do that right at the end. I'm going to carry on and turn the next blank. So I'm going to I'm going to turn one that I want to turn next. Let's go with the coffee. Yes, Ben. Um, so a question from Sol: uh, Will you be turning on the robust lathe? Um, um, no, I'm not much, Sol. If I'm honest, no. I'm uh, I'm presenting the lathe more than turning. I will have a, a large lump on there, and I might just offer a chisel up, but I'm not going to be doing a turning demonstration. It's literally going to be just um me harping on about how much i love the lathe and the reasons why all right let's have a look at that one look at that isn't that pretty all right so we're going to pop that together in a minute let's go on to the next one let's go coffee let's go coffee um right then so the compression mandrel look you can see it there i've got the bushings um preloaded the mandrel itself and the fact that the um the tailstock center goes all the way through means that it pushes on the um, brass tubes and not um, the bar so you don't get any of that distortion of bar so the way these uh, bushings work i've got the the, um, the end cap one up here and then we've got this floating center band that gives me my size dimension for that center ring and then that's also the dimension for the next bit and then we've got the small one right at the end for the nib there now, what I've done to prep this up, because what we have is soft areas and then hard areas. You get the coffee beans, which are soft, and then the polyester, which is hardish in between. I've just pre-soaked each end with super glue, just to harden those um, coffee beans up to make sure nothing, nothing decides to go. Yes, Ben, another question. Okay, so we've got a few questions here. Um, so David does um, saying he's seen other turners use Scotch Bright pad for denibbing the project. Um, any thoughts on where this might work in this process, if at all? Where Brax um, or Scotch Bright type of materials or bracing materials are fantastic on timber, um, but when it comes to this sort of thing, they tend to adhere. They tend to at high speed melt. So if you're going to use them with um, on this, then use them with a liquid. So either burnishing cream um or water that sort of stuff but on timber use them dry absolutely fine no problems um obviously don't need to denib this sort of thing because we're not going to get those fibers come up but on timber yes you are um i would always go the web racks type material so scotch bright type material over wire wool wire wool on the lathe is, is potentially dangerous because it's a bit like candy floss it'll grab very quickly especially if it hits the thread or anything so yeah web racks is by far better yes and Steve's asking, uh, whenever he sands, um, as you show, 
he gets vertical scratches um, as you're looking at the blank on the lathe um, all along. Any tips? So I'm what well, the rotary scratches. I'm guessing. Yep. Um, you're probably starting if it's pens you're talking about. You're probably starting too coarse um, and not going through the grades, not going through enough grades, and maybe not staying on those grades long enough. All three of those reasons will be a cause of those scratches remaining until the end. All right. So um, if going down finer to start with doesn't work, just stick on each grade a bit longer, especially the, the final sort of few. Um, and like I say, uh, maybe fewer, uh, maybe a few more grades as well. And then Frederick saying with the with the micro mesh sanding pads, he's found that the colors do not fully match um, the enclosed color guard guide. Um, do you number the pads in any way which uh, doesn't affect them? Yep, absolutely. Because over time, you know, you, they're going to sort of wear slightly. So you'll see we've got numbers on on all of these just to help us out. Um, just for a bit of quick ID, really. So yes, right. Next one, pens are going to be uh, coffee. Coffee. So back with my gouge. With this first gouge, is going blunt. A bit tighter. Come back on the sharper edge. I got a really strong smell of coffee in the room now. Right, blunt tool. So let's go to a slightly sharper chisel. A little bit more gentle when you get to the edges. And again, we're going to go back to the skew in a minute. There we are. So that parting tool again, just to give us our little recess. There we are. That goes on. And then back to the skew. Give us a nice finish. Skew's gone blunt, so let's give them a quick sharpen. Can I ask you a question, mate? Yeah, that, just Owen? keep going, Ben. Um, so, turn from the tree. Um, how wants to know how much do you leave, leave to allow for sanding um, when you put the fin finishes with the gouge and the chisel? Uh, I put myself making pens as I ended up under diameter a few times. Um, but this demo is motivating him to give him another go. So, it's gone under diameter a couple of times. How much do you leave um, above the bushes? I don't really. I go down to the diameter of those bushes. Okay, maybe, but unintentionally, maybe just a little bit proud um, and then sand down to them. Um, but no, not a huge amount. Barely um, recognisable, really. And Bill's asking, does, does the waste need to be disposed of in a special way? Um, this plastic waste, I do just, I put this in the bin. Um, it's not a recyclable material, so it has to go in our general waste bin. Um, at the moment, resins, there is nowhere to dispose of them. Things like Ecopoxy or companies like Ecopoxy are working um, to make the 
the raw material a natural product. So basically a, a, um, a grown vegetable type material. But still, when it's set, it's still non-recyclable. So yeah, don't put it in the compost or anything like that. Right, then we're nearly there on that bit. Yeah, it's, that's one of those questions, you know, I want to answer really nicely. I want to say, oh, yeah, it's 100% recyclable. At this stage, no, it isn't. I know that because I checked. And I wondered why the bin man wasn't taking it away. Just a little bit too much there to, to tackle with the skew. Right, now we can. Just a little bit careful. This, this coffee being blank because of the softer areas, if you take too much off at a time, it just will want to shatter. So just a little bit of care. So I am going down till it feels flush. So I'm not keeping it particularly proud for any reason. I think we're almost there on this side. Stop and let's have a check. Make sure we're all good before we start sanding again. Lovely. Really nice. The really pungent smell here of coffee. Okay, we'll start dry again and then we'll move through. So 240, 400. 600 i tend to do that this i mean dry abrasive on these sorts of pen blanks is really really coarse the two even 240 um you know we can then wet it down afterwards but always starting dry we're not doing too bad actually i think we might get we'll at least get one more done if not the two Cohen. Yeah. What's the weirdest thing you've ever put in resin? See, I'm not... I haven't done a huge amount of weird things in resin. I know, again, if you go on YouTube and stuff, you'll find all sorts of, of funky, funny things. I've seen even um, mealworms put in resin for some reason. But, no, there's all sorts. So I think um, uh, right at the beginning, I'm not going to do any more to that. I'm going to leave that. What do you reckon, Ben? Shall I sound that a bit more? That's that always quite good. nice, isn't it? Yeah, Friction got... polish? <laughs> yeah. You're right, go on. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, I've got a um, cockroach in resin <laughs> just next door. That's to get on your next over. demo. <laughs> get that one out. Cockroach. Is it still alive? <laughs> right then, a little bit of friction polish. So, no, I've seen all sorts of things done. Next week, I want to do something different for... We're doing a, going to do the same sort of demonstration next week, but with the project kits. I want to show you some new project kits and also, um, again, some ideas, some casting ideas as well, uh, maybe. Now, don't worry. This, um, this friction polish won't stop that smell coming through. So, yeah, I think we're going to do some... Well, next week, I'm going to do some twig project kits casted in resin, and I might, I might even go down the pencil crayon mark. Well, I don't know yet. We'll we'll see what we're going to do. Everybody seen pencils in resin? Yes, Ben. So a bunch of questions just come in, Cohen. Um, Paul's woodworking is asking, do you use a roughing gouge on pen blank? I don't tend to. Ben the pen does. <laughs> um, and we have a similar sort of a, um, a result for, for it. It's just my preference. I tend to go bowl gouge and then onto the skew. Um, it's just what I brought been brought up with, sort of thing. So, so not me personally. And then uh, Paul's asking, have you made any wooden pens with the threads cut into the wood? Um, if so, which wood could hold a thread best? I haven't. However, thread cutting in timber. I've done some thread cutting in timber, but not on pens. Um, uh, denser materials absolutely if you're if you're talking fine threads dense timbers 
Um, if you're talking um, big threads, so inch, inch and a half and upwards, then you, you could use most materials, but you need to soak them in oil. Um, we've used fin uh, fin uh, finishing oil before to soak them, usually about 24 hours before threading, um, and that tends to, to help with um, cutting threads. But, yeah, d general rule is for hand thread chasing, um, the denser the better. All right. If you imagine things like boxwood and some of the exotics, then you're on the right track. There we are. So isn't that lovely? Again, nice material. This is your, your coffee bean blank. They are available in other places in different colors. I quite like this one, this, this sort of creamy sort of color. Um, really look nice once we add them to the, to the pens in a minute. Okay, so there's another one ready to assemble. Let's go. I'm gonna all right, I'm gonna do a really, really quick one before we finish on the um the corn cobs. Let's do this this timber one. This is really interesting, this one, because you don't really know what you're gonna get until you cut into it. It's a bit like Christmas presents. Um or birthday presents, I should be saying now. Move away from Christmas, go on. Um you don't know what color's gonna be there. I haven't also I haven't bothered about matching um matching the two halves up. Yeah, I know you should do. I haven't bothered um on this occasion. All right, we're gonna go nice sharp gouge again. Check, make sure nothing's gonna touch that tool rest, of course. Lay speed about two thousand again. Yes, Ben. Questions. A question from Graham. Um, he has some tanned fish skins, um, which he'd like to glue to the brass tubes and then club cover with a clear epoxy. Um, have you tried anything like that? Um, I haven't, but I've seen it. We, I mean, we sell blanks like that already that have got a similar thing. Um, and it's almost like a snake skin when done. So really, really cool looking. Absolutely go for it. Um, support each side when you put it in the, in the mold. Um, bit of potato or something like that. Support each side. And then cast around it, no problem at all. And if you you don't have to worry about pressure, you can just go just bare naked resin if you want to. Um, but keep it cool, let it dry very very slowly or cure slowly, and then those bubbles should dissipate uh, fairly well. Also, right. So this is maple. This is going to turn beautifully. I'm hoping. And this will be a dry sand on this one. Sharper gouge. My first expectation of this turning beautifully wasn't right. It's not turning very nicely at all. But I just want to show you if I can get down to a little bit more of that timber, the various colors that are inside. Right, I'm going to have a quick look at that. Then I'm going to turn the dust extraction on because it's a little bit dusty. Look at that. Ain't that pretty? So that's a dye. It's got like a purple dye in there. You've got some lovely oranges coming through as well. Right, dust extraction. Okay, I think we can move on to the skew. Let's just quickly pop that that little uh, shoulder in again. Let me 
we go. And then back to the skew, I'm gonna change my skew. We're starting to blunt that one. What's happened with this one, this is a burr maple, so where the denser areas are, that hasn't taken as much of the dye in as the rest. So you get that real sort of mixture in colour. Almost there. Don't forget, guys, we're having a few issues with the chat, but keep the questions coming, and then we're going to transfer them. Ben's going to ask them as we get them through. Yes, Ben. So uh, a question here from Fuller. Um, are there any household trees that would be suitable after drying? It's used branches. Sorry. Sorry <laughs> Say that again. Fuller's asking, um, are there any household trees that would be suitable after drying? He's used branches from uh, cold from yew and ornamental cherry. Um, are other species suitable? Everything. Everything's fair game. Absolutely. I mean, that, as turners, that's where we, you know, we make our living from general, um, I don't say general trees, ornamental trees um native trees anything really there's nothing that i know of that is a real no-no can use even you know things like buddleias and that sort of stuff which we would normally disregard because they're real lovely colors and things like magnolias and buddleias um you know that sort of stuff the best timber is free of course yes ben um, so Carol's, Carol's asking, how do we keep the um, the the dust collector hose? How do we keep? Sorry, I'll start again. <laughs> stay uh, how do you keep your dust collector hose to stay in place? So this is a piece of what we refer to as stay put hose. This is available in meters from fifty mil to seventy five to hundred. So two, three, four inch. I got a feeling it might go even bigger. But yeah, it's available in in meter lengths. On the Axminster website, in the Axminster catalogue, just search Stay Put Hose. And then a, a question here from Colin. Um, are there any pen turners that you would recommend um, for research purposes? Not sure who the top pen makers are in the country. There's one person that I'm going to say straight away, Ron Caddy, who's a good friend of us here uh, in Axminster. But uh, he's known very, very well in the in the UK as being one of the top pen makers. Member of the RPT, the Register of Professional Turners. Um, but uh, yeah, he's the one I'd recommend. And, and yourself, Ben, same? Yeah, definitely Ron Caddy. Check him out. He's, um, he does some lovely, lovely work. Um, Tony... Tony's asking, what time are you starting in sitting bomb? Um, so my first session, these are hour and a half sessions, and we're doing two of them. First one starts at 10. And, and then we start again at uh, it's, uh, hour and a half. Work that one out. Half past 11 then, the <laughs> other one. And then Mark's um, he's making some pens at the moment with, um, with the figured sycamore and was wondering what they would look like with spirit stains. Have Beautiful. you ever tried this method? Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. You look at uh, um, some of the uh, the rippled and the, the, the figured um, guitar bodies, and you see them when they're coloured and sprayed. They're, they're shimmers. Really, really pretty stuff. What you'll do, you won't cover up the timber, but it'll enhance that figure. It'll make it jump right out. Um, now, you can do it in two ways. You can block colour it and leave it, sand it away um or sorry not sand it away but keep it that color or you can sand it back so again like here the harder uh, areas 
um, hold more or hold less color. So you get a real mixture of, uh, of color. And this is beautiful. So this is going to be purely just um, dry sanding. So I'm going to start with 150 grit here and work our way through. We're going to run over a little bit, Ben, a little bit. But I do want to do that corn cob as well. So this is just, I want to say it's just timber, but it's not. It's a mixture of timber and resin. But it only needs to be, for this one, dry sanded. A little bit coarser to start with. 150 grit. I'm not slowing the lathe down either. I'm keeping it running at its 2,000 revs. So that was uh, 150. We're now going to go to 40. So I've got a bit of a cheeky question here from Woodwork Learner. Go for it. Who's better at pens, Colin or Ben? <laughs> Shall I answer this one? You should ask somebody <laughs> else that one, really. But I, I honestly believe Ben. <laughs> I'm only a standing. So Colin uh, taught me how to do the pens. It's probably one of the first things we did when I when I started here all those years ago. Um, Colin showed me the ropes on how to make the pens. And, I can't uh, hear a word you're saying, so you could be saying so, the most horrible things. <laughs> no, I'm just telling them how you showed me how to make pens when I first came here. It's a great little project for beginners, um, a really kind of easy step-by-step -step process. Um, so definitely, you know, if you haven't done pens before, give them a go. Ben, just pop to the overhead cam a minute. So I need to go a little bit further with this. I don't know if you can see, that's tearing there. So we need to go a little bit further just to take that out. Yes, Ben. Paul's asking, do we sell the knockout bars here at Accent Stats? I think, I think they're available as spares on some of the machines, yes. Um, we need to phone our after sales, phone the technical sales uh, guys and girls. They'll be able to search to see which is available. There we are. So that will back to the 150. Now we go back through again, 240. Four hundred. Six hundred. Bit of sanding sealer, fresh bit of rag. A little bit left on there, we're, we'll disguise that. I always tend to turn the, the lathe off when I'm putting sanding sealer on. I know you can put it on with the lathe running, but I just find you can get far better coverage with the lathe off and then you can go back first of all with your damp area of tissue and then buff up with a dry bit that lovely shine yes ben so a question from robert um any chance in the future to make a lazy susan he um they have the mechanism uh, turntable but not sure if the platter part should be larger or the base yeah, of course we can. Absolutely. Uh, we were talking Lazy Susans this morning, weren't we? Um, so, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to be doing a cheese dish um, in a couple of weeks' time. But, uh, yeah, we might be able to put a Lazy Susan in that one because uh, fitting them is quite interesting as well. So we'll look to do something. It might be a two-parter if I do that. So, yes. Ben, just before the next question, just quickly pop over, have a look at that, uh, how wonderful that, that timber is and the shimmer it gives. All of these are going to be fitted together in a minute, guys. So you're going to see them as completed pens. I'm just doing all the turning first. Yes, Ben, another question. Um, so a couple of questions here. Um, do, so this is one from Sol. Do scraping tools work well for resins and other materials without a grain? Um, they tend to work well on resins. I'm not a massive fan. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, resins are the best use of them, I found. Um, I wouldn't use them on timber. Um, a lot of people do. Absolutely fine. No problem. Go for it. But no, not my not my choice, if I'm honest. And then this one from Wayne, um, but it's um, something I can do. Um, where can he find the drawing for Jason's car he did last week? Um, 
that's my bad. I need to put that on the comments under the video. So keep an eye out under the video, and I'll add that as a link um, to the um, to the to the video of the car. Apologies for that. That's my fault. I mean, I'll just add a, a quick trim on that one. A little bit of super glue on the inside, um, which I just needed to remove, which I've done with a barrel trimmer. There we go. Right, last one. I've done a lot of prep on this one. I've eaten the corn start for a start. And I've dried it in the oven, cut away the, the soft outer shell, dyed it, um, soaked it in the countertop resin, thin resin, turned it down, super glued. Okay. You can, of course, if you've got a vacuum changer, the chamber, then just use thin resin, um, cactus juice, that sort of thing, and put it in the vacuum chamber. And once you've dyed it, works absolutely brilliantly. And you can buy them as pre-done ones as well. Hopefully now, though, I don't have to do too much to this. All I have to do is get the shape. So again, our passing tool. There we go. And then we just turn, which we, we just turn. I always liken these corn cobs to almost looking like snake skin. Like we were talking about the fish skin earlier. There we are. Let's turn a little bit off of this one. It's sort of getting in my way. This is the right diameter there. Yes, Ben. So a question from Anton. Can you repair um, cracks in wood with um, kintsugi or, or the fake kintsugi? Uh, kintsugi, the um, the gold, where the, um, you know, like in China and Japan, where they, if they break a vase, they repair it with gold. Okay. It's not something that I've really heard of. I don't know is my honest answer. And then from Bill, do you push into the resin from above center with the parting tool? Um, no, I was below. Um, I was trying to cut on center. Beautiful. I like that. Some really pretty patterns going on there. Yeah, no, um, on center if you can. All right, Ben? Yeah. So a bit of hand sanding here. I'll go, um, because it's nice and speedy, we've got a bit of friction polish on this one. And then we'll start assembling. Mixture today between bought blanks and, and ones I've made myself. Pens are great for experimenting with different materials. And if you are casting with resin, of course experimenting with what you can put in that resin. There we are. So that was a 240, so 400 next. Let's go for, let's treat ourselves. Let's have a new bit of 400 and 600. All very different, these materials. This corn cob was probably, if I'm honest with you, the easiest one to turn. And the stabilized timber, the most difficult. It's given us a real batch of interesting looking pens, though. There we are. Let's stop and have a look. Let's go with a bit of friction polish. I really like that. That's my favorite one so far. There we 
are. Then we can a little bit of the wet area and then finish with dry. Beautiful. Right then, let's start the assembly. So just fire questions away when you get any now, Ben, because all the machinery's off. Mm -hmm. I can hear everyone. Let's get rid of that. So would like to know who in the office has um, called dibs on the maple resin pen. <laughs> no one's called dibs on any of them just yet. Not to my knowledge, anyway. <laughs> Let's get rid of our pen mandrel. Um, I'll just be guided by you in a minute, Ben, is to centre this up. That's my bad here. I don't know whether you can see that, that mark there. This one, all this here. I should have cleaned that earlier when I was practicing. I didn't really wipe it down enough. So make sure you do that at home. Clean down after you've used your uh, water to sand. Right then, so assembly press. I'm going to do this so I can show you. Slightly out, just move that over. There we go. Okay. Yes, Ben. Um, Anton would like to know where you got such skinny corn. Oh, no, this was much, Anton, this was much, much bigger than this. So um, what happens, obviously, once I've eaten it, then I'm left with um, the, the just the core. Um, it dries about half its size when it's dry, and it's very light. It's almost like polystyrene when it's dry. Um, and then I just cut it back to get the harder centre because – I want to soak it anyway. I'm just going to pop around the, to here, Ben. Um, because I want to, to soak it, I need minimal amount um, to soak. Um, I don't want to, you know, the, the uh, colours to fight their way through things. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's cut down nice and small. Right, so I'm just going to assemble. This is a very, very easy kit to assemble and i'm just going to grab ben he's going to help me just for five minutes so he's going to step away from the questions um i just need him to take things out of bags if i can give you those ben i'm going to just keep talking and assembling if you can pop the down camera on ben then we can i can be assembling whilst you're taking out of bags this is a dead simple one to put together i keep saying that but uh, let me show you. We'll do it a bit at a time. Remember the European pen kit. I tend to start, and let's go with that first one that we've done. We'll go with this beautiful um, cone, pine cone. Okay. I tend to start with the nib end first and the actual nib itself. So we're going to pop that in there just to start with. So. Got a question here from Frederick Cohen. Um, yeah. How do you find CA finishes? Do you like them? Do you know, I haven't done it. I've, I've heard about it, especially on pen making, an awful lot. I've never done it myself. Maybe that's something we can experiment with over the next few weeks. And Sam's asking, if no one's got dibs on it, can you bring it, up, bring it with you on Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So now the mechanism up to the line. Okay, little indented line that was just there. I've gone up to that. Then you can screw in the actual end. Make sure it's long enough. Let's go a little bit further. No, nope, that's fine. Okay, that's that bit done. Then the top. We're going to start the top. This is the little bit that goes in the top. So it's got a little silver bit. I just unscrew it a little bit. 
and then position it. So my fingers are all in the way, just bring it up. Push him in. Once you've done that, then you can unscrew that cap. Lose it in the shavings. <laughs> unscrew that cap, and then you can position your clip. Unscrew screw that on. It's not made for big, chunky fingers. I want to have that lovely bit at the front. Okay. And then that little decorative ring goes on there. I would glue that decorative ring on. I don't like it running free because every time you take that off to put a new refill in, you're going to lose it. So, and then push together. I'll put it upside down. Hang on. Turn it the other way around. On these little decorative rings, there's a little curved side and a flat side. I like the curved side down. That's almost swirling around there. That's really pretty. I like that pen. All right, so that's first one. Let's do the rest nice and quickly now, though. Now you know how they go together. We'll do them in the same order. So next one is the coffee. Another job. Colin, does the, um, from Seoul, does the assembly tool also do disassembly? Yeah, it does, thankfully. Um, it, yeah, you, it's got several different sizes of, of internal bar to push things apart. Um, we've used it several times. Right, so I'll do exactly the same thing. Nice and quick this time. And there, pop in the reef, the reef or the mechanism rather. And the refill. And the top cap. So nice comments coming in about the um, the pinecone pen. It's really pretty. I'm so chuffed with that pen. And the the, the lovely thing is, you don't really know what it's going to look like until you until you turn it. So it's quite a, a, a fun piece to make. coffee bean every time that gets used we're going to get that lovely smell of coffee i like that one right next one i'm going to show you all of these put together in a minute so remember the maple was the next one i'm going to start off where i left off with the last one that makes more sense doesn't it So put the cap on, unscrew him, put the clip in. That's the top section done. And then we have nib and mechanism. Uh, 
I go up to the little indent. A question here from Pete Cohen about um, the resin. Is there a minimum temperature for casting? There will be, and it is on the the um, the material when you uh, the box and everything when you buy it. I'm not quite sure. It's quite low um, because the lower it is, the longer it takes to dry, and that's quite good if you want to get rid of as many bubbles as possible. Um, it's 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 a low temperature. I don't know what it is off the top of my head though. Um, email that in, and I'll I'll research it and get it back to you. Okay, that's the maple one. Um, did you have one more? Yeah, look at that. one more packet, and we'll do the corn cobs. Fine selection of pens there. Let's go nib first. A question here from Jenny. Um, what is roughly the investment cost to be able to make pens? I'm going to hand that one over to you, Ben. Yep, so the, it depends. Um, you can do it very cheaply depending on what kind of mandra and what sort of standard you want to go to. I would definitely recommend if you're doing lots of pens um, for this, uh, you know, the kind of higher-end mandrel, the compression mandrel. Um, but you can get started for really cheap. Um and you know, Colin's got all these um, these bits here. You know, the, the uh, corn on the cob is is left over <laughs> his dinner. From my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you know, what I'm getting at is you can use little scraps and and things like that. The cost, I guess, is in the in the kits and um, and that initial cost of the mandrel. But also, you know, Colin's using um, the pen press. There, you could use a bench vise um, to to cut down costs. Use you know, use what you've got already. But roughly, um, you know, between fifty and a hundred pounds, I guess, um, for for your, you know, for the full setup. Um, from James, did the little tenon for the ring have to be precise depth? Yes, but it's on the um, the bushing, so you may have seen. Uh, where's my bit of? There we go. So on on this little captive ring here it goes over that that bushing and the lower depth so that smaller diameter on this one is where you need to cut to okay i don't know whether it's picking up properly there okay so it's actually got two diameters on this bushing um and as long as that ring goes over it which means it's going to be the same diameter as as this part of the bushing okay wow that was a a mammoth session there. Let's have a look at them pens. Let's get them best face up, of course. And for me, the best face on that one is there. But a lovely little selection. So no, there is a little bit of timber. We use the timber of the stabilized maple there. But my old corn cobs. Okay. The one I cast myself there. And then we've got two bought blanks. The coffee bean. Uh, and the maple, the stabilized maple. So really interesting looking pens there, just to break away from the norm a bit, a way, break away from the timber a little bit. Um, fantastic little effects. I'm going to do the same next week for you on the um, the project kits themselves. And I've got a few things that I'd like to do. I'm going to do something cast with um, bottle stoppers. We're going to do some trumpet pen um, desk sets as well. Um, and hopefully just bring some other ideas for you um, just to stray away from the norm a little bit. Have we got any more questions, Ben, before we sign off for the day? I think we're good. Yeah. We're good. Thanks ever so much, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget what I always say. Share um, with as many people as you can. Give us a thumbs up if you like what you've seen. Um, and we'll see you next time. Tomorrow, don't forget, we've got Ben. Ben, what are you doing tomorrow? Tomorrow, we are looking forward to Valentine's. We're doing a love spoon. Oh, it's all about Valentine's tomorrow. Thanks very much, very much, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.